The periodic table can tell us a lot about elements um, and how they react. One of the things the periodic tells us is about the atomic radius. Now atomic radius is simply the size of the atom. We know that the periods or the rows are the same thing as energy levels. And the more energy levels you have, the larger the atom gets. So as we go down a group, the atom gets larger. So if we were to draw the atom going down group one, we would notice that the atom is getting larger as it goes down because it's gaining energy levels. Now as you go across a period, so say um, row two or the second energy level, every time you add another electron, you're also adding another proton, and so the atom gets smaller as you go across because that attraction between positive and negative is increasing, so it pulls the atom in smaller. So what you have to remember is that as you go to the lower left, lower left is larger. So if you had a question like which has the larger atomic uh, radius, potassium or arsenic, first you would want to find those elements on the periodic table. So potassium is right here and arsenic is over here. So the larger one then would be potassium because it has less protons, so there's less of an attraction pulling the electrons closer to the nucleus. Which has a smaller atomic radius, fluorine or iodine? So fluorine is right here, iodine is right here. So fluorine would have the smaller atomic radius because it has less energy levels. Ionization energy tells us the amount of energy needed to lose an electron. So it's the energy that the atom is gaining, so energy needed, to lose an electron. So we have an electron as a product, and when you lose an electron, you form a positive charge, so that's where that positive um, charge on our atom came from. High ionization energy means it's harder to remove an electron, and the smaller the atom is, the higher the ionization because the electron is so attracted to the nucleus. Low ionization energy means it's easy to remove that electron. And so the larger the atom is, the lower the ionization energy because the electron is farther from the nucleus, so that attraction isn't as great. So if we look at our periodic table then, if we move to the lower left, lower left, less, energy. So francium being the largest atom would require, require the least amount of energy to lose its electron. So it loses an electron really easily. So if we have a question like this where we're looking at putting it in decreasing order, so decreasing means you would start with the high energy and you would end with low energy. So you would want to find these elements, potassium, fluorine, nitrogen, and lithium, and then go from the upper right down to the lower left. So potassium would have the lowest out of all of them, and fluorine would be the highest, and we would just work our way across. So it would be fluorine, nitrogen, lithium, and then potassium. Electron affinity is how easily it is to gain an electron. So ionization talked about losing an electron. Electron affinity is talking about gaining the electron. Now for this particular trend, we ignore the noble gases. So we're going to pretend group 18 isn't even there because they don't gain or lose electrons. So we're just going to chop them off. So the smaller the atom is, the easier it is for the nucleus to attract an extra electron. And then the opposite of that, the larger the atom is, the less attraction it has for extra electrons. So as we go from that um, upper right down to the lower left, so lower left, less 
attraction for the new or for an electron for extra electrons. So francium being the largest atom is not going to want to attract or it's going to have a hard time attracting another electron. It will lose its electron really easily, but it can't gain an electron easily. All right, so here the question is asking us to put them in order of increasing. Um, so we want to start with the lowest and go to the highest. So which atoms don't attract electrons to which atoms attract electrons. And so find these three atoms on our periodic table. We have zinc, which is right here, um, tungsten, and then cesium. So cesium being the uh, largest atom won't attract electrons. The e, so that would be cesium is the lowest and then tungsten and then zinc being the largest out of the, I'm sorry, the smallest out of the three will attract the electron the easiest. All right, ionic radius, um, again, we're dealing with the size. This time it's the size of the ion. So atoms gain or lose electrons to be like the noble gases, and we want to be like the noble gases because remember they have that full outer shell or full valence shell or eight valence electrons. So the whole reason why all the atoms gain and lose is to be like them. An ion is what we call the atom after it's gained or lost electrons. When you lose electrons, you form a positive charge because you have more protons, and it's called a cation. So cation has that positive sign, if you use the letter T as a positive sign, um, to help you remember cation is positive. And when you lose electrons, the atom will shrink in size because the protons will be able to attract the electrons that are left. If you gain electrons, you form a negative charge, and that's called an anion. Negative charges because you have more negative electrons when you gain them. And the atom would be larger than normal because you have more negative, and so the positive um, nucleus has a hard time attracting them. So if we were look to see which one has a larger radius, magnesium or magnesium plus two. Well, this positive two means you've lost electrons. So magnesium is gonna be larger because when I lose electrons, it will shrink the atom. Bromine or bromine minus one. The negative charge means you gained an electron, which makes it harder for the nucleus to pull the um, electrons closer. So Br minus one would be larger. And then magnesium plus two or magnesium or aluminum plus three. So we have different amounts of electrons being lost. Well, the more electrons you lose, the smaller the atom gets. So magnesium plus two would be larger because it hasn't lost as many electrons. Reactivity, we divide it up in between our metals and our nonmetals. So metals tend to lose electrons, so they form those cations. The larger the atom is, the easier it is to lose, so the more reactive. Francium is the most reactive metal, so the closer you are to francium, the more reactive metal you are. Nonmetals gain electrons to form anions, so the smaller the atom is, the easier it is to gain, the more reactive it is. And fluorine is our most reactive nonmetal. So just remember the F words, francium and fluorine. Francium, the most reactive metal. Fluorine is the most reactive nonmetal. And then finally, we have metallic character. So this is how metal-like are you. And remember, metallic atoms lose electrons easily. So the larger the atom is, the easier it is to lose, the more metallic the character. So which one has more metallic character? You're really just basing it on size. So cesium or nickel, which one is larger? The larger one is cesium, so cesium would be more metallic. And then silver or gold, the larger it is, the more metallic character it has because the easier it is to lose the electron. So it would be gold. Make sure you try the problems on the Google form.